Drag racing their way into turn number one. Truex will have it by just a nose, but Blaney hanging tough with him on the outside lane. They are dead even, side by side in the back straightaway. It remains that way as they make their way back down to turn number three. No advantage, clear cut for either side. Now slightly Martin Truex to the inside. Grabs the spot from Blaney. Here comes Larson as well. While Truex takes over the lead, here comes Kyle Larson up on the high side of the racetrack, pulling up alongside Kyle Busch. That's the race for third. They're side by side in one. Now that's where we expect to see Kyle Larson making hay. All the way to the safer Mary. Oh, a big crash in turn one. Into the wall goes Joey Logano. Eric Almirola comes piling in. And the biggest hit of the bunch belongs to Danica Patrick. Flames erupting out from under that car. She was up on the driver's side door momentarily. A serious crash for Danica Patrick. Window net down. Out she comes after a vicious lick in turn two. A fiery crash going off into turn number one. At least three cars involved. Back to Dave Moody. I have no idea what started it, Joe, but the first thing we saw was Danica Patrick's car up on its door. Looked like she was completely airborne at one juncture. The car erupted in a ball of flame. Two others were involved. Uh, the Joey Logano car sits down on the apron, all used up. Eric Almirola's at machine came piling in late after he got clipped from behind. His car is up against the safer barrier at the exit of turn number two. A vicious lick for Danica Patrick, who walks away, not happy. Hands on the hips, but boy, who can blame her after a ride like that? Well, let's go back and revisit it. Uh, boy, Joey just turned down the racetrack and in to Danica Patrick. And like Dave Moody called it, a vicious hit by Danica and then Eric Almirola nowhere to go and they are running 210 going into turn number one and I think Eric was doing every bit of that when he caught that wreck. Oh watching the replay on the uh, ISM vision screen here the whole back end of Almirola's Ford came up in the air and Dave Moody was talking about the situation with Danica Patrick up on the driver's side of the car and flames all up in turns one and two. That was a scary looking crash. Well you know what I'm going to tell you something here. I'm going to just go out on a limb and make an assumption. I'm not so sure that Joey did not have a tire issue. That car snapped, Dave Moody. I understand Danica is very upset, but I have a feeling when we go back and get a closer look at this replay, we're going to find that Logano had an issue going into turn number one. Well, that may well be the case. I can tell you right now, Danica Patrick, uh, just judging from the gesticulations and the and the look on her face, was not at all happy when she was uh, telling uh, Joey Logano, or, or at least questioning Joey Logano. They both now are in the same ambulance, and I guarantee that's a pretty animated conversation right now after a vicious ride here in turn two. Well, it's left a mess over in turns one and two, so much so the red flag has come out at lap 200. A hard crash in turns one and two has brought out the caution flag and led to the red flag because of all the cleanup that's taking place over there. Again, Danica Patrick, uh, Eric Almirola, and uh, A.J. Allmendinger, who apparently cut a tire to trigger the whole thing. We saw Danica climb from the, uh, the car, walk to the ambulance. Obviously very upset because she had a great run going here this evening. But I think it's pretty obvious, Jeff, she doesn't understand what happened to Joey. Well, and I think we can shed some more light on this. By the way, we are uh, just kind of watching the situation. Eric Almirola has yet to get from his car. Uh, the helmet is off. Safety crews are there. Logano out of the car. Patrick out of the car. Alex Hayden, it appeared as though a failure going into turn number one caused Joey's car to literally just change lanes, drive down the racetrack, and turning Danica Patrick. All right, we'll uh, check in with Alex here in a few moments, but uh, it seemed clear, and obviously Danica was very upset, like you pointed out. We uh, we watched her walk uh, to the ambulance and waiting for Joey Logano. You could see Joey trying to gesture, saying, you know, in, that yeah. we had an issue going in there. So we'll see how it uh, pans out. Obviously, Danica's going to want to get an opportunity to check the replay as yeah. well. With, without knowing for sure. Obviously, she's upset. But uh, the replay clearly showed that car just snapped in a way that you wouldn't turn a car, car changing lanes or trying to dive underneath somebody. That uh, definitely was a tire that went down. But uh, it has certainly caused a mess. Let's go back over to Dave Moody. 
Well, the track is a big-time mess, Joe. There's no question about it. Fluid down really from uh, the midway mark of the turn all the way to the exit of the corner. The uh, Joey Logano machine is going up on the back of a wrecker. Danica Patrick's car, there's no way a wrecker would tow that away. It's going to have to go on the flatbed. The big concern now at this juncture remains at the exit of turn two, up next to the outside safer barrier where the safety crews continue to attend to Eric Almarola. And right now they are going to remove the roof uh, in order to help to get Eric out of that race car. Obviously the entire uh, crew for Eric right now focused on the ISM vision screens here at the Kansas Speedway. Again, Eric does not have the helmet on now. Safety crews are there, but it looks like we're going to have to take the roof off that Ford in order to safely get Eric out of the race car. So let's take a break with 67 laps to go from Kansas Speedway. This is the Motor Racing Network, the voice of NASCAR. 67 laps to go in the Go Bowling 400 here at Kansas Speedway under a red flag after a crash between Eric Almarola, Joey Logano, and Danica Patrick. Uh, we're hearing... Uh, that uh, Eric is still in the car. They're cutting the roof off to remove him. He's talking to the safety personnel, uh, but uh, apparently because of the way the roll bars are bent in, that's why they're taking the roof off to get him out safely. Well, that is good news, and obviously we will keep you updated as we are given updates. What, what we can tell you is literally before that car came to a complete stop, talking about the car of Eric Elmarola, he had already dropped the window net. Now, he's got to do that himself. So he was uh, conscious, obviously, able to drop that window net, and now they just need to cut the roof off, uh, as you pointed out, Joe, because the car, uh, Dave Moody, took a vicious hit. He tried to get to the inside of Joey Logano, was not successful, and hit Joey's left front tire. That car went airborne for what, uh, several yards, Dave, before it finally came down on all four tires, but it really took a hit. Now, there was a lot of daylight underneath that Smithfield Ford of Eric Almarola as he uh, caromed off uh, first the Joey Logano machine, then the outside safer barrier, and then uh, really just crash landed back onto the racetrack and slid back up next to the outside safer barrier where it has come to rest at the exit of turn number two. But again, from our vantage point, and we don't have an ideal view because the, the safety crews are pretty much surrounding that machine, Eric Almaroli is conscious. He is talking to the safety crews, and they are working to remove him out the top of that uh, of that vehicle Usually discretion being the better part of valor. They they may go to the cervical collar or other devices there to make sure that there's no injury and thus the need to take the roof off that race car. Oh, that kind of hit would certainly shake you up. I don't care how many restraints uh, and how you're buckled into the car there uh, because he just nosed in there 200 miles an hour, as you said, and the back end came up in the air. Uh, that was a vicious, vicious hit. And for Eric, that's coming off uh, what, his best finish of the year last week at Talladega Super Speedway. Of course, it went bad because, yeah, fourth place is where he finished uh, because then they found a, an issue in post-race inspection. So his crew chief, Drew Blickensturfer, is not here this weekend. $65,000 out of the pocket and 35 points that he was fined. Well... You know, when you talk about Talladega, Joe, where they finished fourth, you got to remember that the week before that, it was a top ten finish for Eric there, too, at Richmond, where he came home in the ninth position. Now, everybody is pretty much able to see what is going on here at the racetrack, but I think somebody who can describe the concern is Alex Hayden, who is down there in that Richard Petty Motorsports pit area as the team continues to kind of focus on the vision screen as they work to remove their driver. Yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly uh, a, an anxious crew down here as they're sitting inside Eric Almarola's pit box. Some of them went on the way back to the garage area. Others still remain here as a couple of them begin to tear down the pit box. But overall, yeah, there's a lot of concern for their driver, Eric Almarola, down here. To your point a, a little earlier, the, the Joey Logano team said he blew a right front tire at about the worst spot you can do it. 210 miles an hour going into turn one, right front tire blows away and loses complete control of the race car. So uh, that's the word from both of these pit boxes down here. With more, Steve Post. You know, Alex, you just described the scene in Eric Almarola's pit box, and it is the same in every pit box here in the garage area. We talk about the NASCAR family. I'm standing here, Clint Boyer's car is all, our crew is all gathered around looking at the monitors. Other teams are looking at the uh, ISM vision screens where they've got them visible. Here in um, Daniel Suarez's pit, 
there's six or eight crew guys, and they're all just wondering what's going on and really a lot of concern down here as they watch on the big screens and on the television monitors as the crews tend to Eric Almirola. So the scene up there in Richard Petty Motorsports, while it's their team and their driver, it is a similar scene in every pit box and gar- or pit box here up and down pit road. Ah, tough, tough hit for all three of those drivers uh, with the issue coming here at lap uh, 199. And again, uh, still under the red flag, and it's still going to be some time before they get Eric out of the car and then get all the mess cleaned up down between turns one and two. 33-year-old driver out of uh, Tampa, Florida, Eric Almirola is. Uh, began his racing career back in 2007 and really had a lot of good things going for him, uh, Dave Moody, just in the last couple of weeks. Really beginning to turn that team around and also, by the way, having a very good run here tonight uh, with a good run at Richmond, finishing ninth, fourth last week at Talladega, and pretty solid here tonight until this moment. Yeah, absolutely. It's all gone uh, for naught here tonight, obviously. But, you know, Richard Petty Motorsports, they downsized during the off season, going from two cars down to just the one, the traditional number 43, the, the legendary number 43, uh, originally driven by Richard Petty. Eric Almirola, their only driver this year, and they have shown some results in the early races of this season, trying to get pointed back. They made some major engineering changes, started building their own race cars last year, and quite honestly, they figured out toward the end of the season that 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 was not the best path for them to take. They've kind of reversed field here in 2017 and begun getting a a lot more help from Roush Fenway Racing and from Team Penske. Uh, uh, And and the results have begun to show, obviously, this is going to be a pretty severe setback for that race team after a pretty tough hit in the points category last week following Talladega. Yeah, that's two weeks in a row, uh, two different uh, situations. But as Dave said, uh, a big hit for that organization from last week, the penalties that were assessed after the race at Talladega, and now this week, hopefully not too severe, uh, the injuries there for Eric Almirola. Right now being attended to by no fewer than 25 safety officials that are on the scene there. That petty blue roof has been peeled back, and now the uh, safety crew is able to actually get in there and work with Eric. And again, if you are just joining us, the the thing that we do want to say is Eric was alert. He was talking to the safety crews, and it just had to do with the way that that impact twisted that car, bent the frame, moved the roll bars, and they felt like the best way to get him out of the car was to remove the roof so they could get in there and get to Eric Almirola, and that is what they're doing right now. All right, that process continues. We'll keep you posted as soon as we hear more on the condition of Eric Almirola and the cleanup of the track and the resumption of tonight's race. But let's uh, spend a few minutes and talk about what's going to happen next week here on Motor Racing Network. It is all-star race time at Charlotte Motor Speedway, and uh, once again this year another twist has been added to the all-star race. Uh, We've changed the length of the event, the segments, And uh, Goodyear has a real interesting twist with a softer tire that can be used. And they're going to put it on when they need to get grip and they need to get speed. That format that you talk about, uh, 420s, followed by a 10-lap run to the checkered flag and all of the money. Uh, Goodyear will bring a normal race tire, just like they do each and every week. But the teams will have the option to bolt on a softer, stickier, gummier tire that will provide more grip and more speed. So uh, a, a lot of interest behind that, Joe. I think a lot of people want to see just exactly how that's going to work, and we're going to see it for the first time next weekend in Charlotte. And, Steve Post, I imagine crew chiefs are already kind of sitting around planning how we're going to use that uh, uh, for our best finish there when we put those tires on. You'd automatically think you just put them on in that last 10-lap segment, but, you know, there's probably somebody thinking there might be a better way. Well, and that's crew chiefs, and that's how they work on it. Immediately when that was announced at Charlotte Motor Speedway, I think uh, Kurt Busch might have been one of the drivers uh, there as part of the announcement, and Kyle Larson, and uh, Kurt Busch kind of, when they briefed him on it before it, he had already made connection with Tony Gibson to give him the heads up, maybe even a head start on it a little bit so they could think about what they were going to do, and you're right, conventional wisdom says that they would save it to the end, but we know with these crew chiefs and we know how they operate, conventional wisdom is something that doesn't necessarily fly because if everyone does the same thing, you're all just in the same spot. The teams do get a set of those tires to practice with on Friday in the practice session, and I think that's going to be a real determinant. They'll be able to see how they uh, how they uh, perform, how long they perform, and what they do along the way. So it is going to be entertaining to see how those tires are used. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Here's the update on Eric Elmarola. He has been removed from the car 
on a backboard placed on a stretcher. Right now he is being loaded into the ambulance and headed to the care center. And needless to say, we'll keep you updated as updates become available to us right here on the Motor Racing Network.